Turn to 511. Let it stand. Solid rock. solid rock and I just pray we just put all our hope in you Lord just share with others Lord what you mean to us Lord just be with the service today thank you for all the blessings and and all the needs on our prayer list and the ones that mentioned Lord the families that's lost loved ones and, and all the things that's going on Lord we know you're the one that can take care of it all Lord give us comfort and strength to carry on, Lord. Just pray. <clears throat> Just speak to, through Brother Donnie this morning, giving the words that uh, give us that strength and encouragement. And we can carry out and share with others, Lord. Your word is what where would we be without your word, Lord? We wouldn't know the truth. And I just pray, Lord, you'll just guide and direct us in all the things we do. Bless this offering that we'll today and let it be used for your honor and glory. Just pray for our church, Lord, that we'll just that the neighbor uh, community will just see a shining light coming out of this church, Lord, and that uh, just bring them closer to maybe knowing you. Thank you again for your love and all you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning again. So let me ask y'all before we get started with our uh, preaching this morning, how many of you at home has a New American Standard Bible that you know of? It'd be called NASB. Anybody? Okay. If you are at thrift stores within the next two weeks and see any NASB Bibles, if you would pick those up, I will gladly pay you for them. What I want to do, I want to get us enough NASB Bibles to have a few pew Bibles. This is the reason. Uh, I'm going to start a new series in August in the book of Luke called Simple Church, and it's going to be followed by Acts. Uh, you can certainly read any Bible that you want to. However, the New American Standard is the a highly good Bible. It's not that the King James is not, 
But uh, if I can get enough pew Bibles, it may would be beneficiary for us to try to track along the same Bible. And it's easier to explain the English words in the American Standard, the difference in the King James. I can explain the King James words, but and we'll see one today what I'm talking about. It's not a critical huge thing, but if you just see some, uh, pick them up and I'll pay for them. And uh, we'll start our new series in two weeks uh, in the book of Luke. We're going to actually start chapter three, because then in December we'll kick back to chapter one and two, which of course covers the birth and the Christmas story. And so my, my plans would be to go through the book of Luke and the book of Acts, Acts after the book of Luke. And one reason is the book of Luke and the book of Acts is addressed to the same person, the office. And uh, the, the greater meaning being to, to demonstrate uh, the Lord's plan through the church. So this morning and next week, we're going to be finishing up the book of Colossians. And if you want to go ahead and turn your Bible, we're going to be in Colossians chapter 4, reading verses 1 and verse 2. And we're in the book of Colossians and have been so for a while, and we are in the midst, and we'll conclude a little section within the Coloss uh, book of Colossians, dealing with a Christ-honoring family and society. And we've talked about wives, we've talked about husbands, We've talked about children. We've talked about fathers and parents. We talked about slaves last week. Today we're going to talk about masters. And then we'll go into prayer. And the Bible says in 4.1, Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. And then the companion uh, scripture is Ephesians 6 9 which says essentially the same thing and ye masters do the same things unto them forbearing threatening knowing that your masters also in heaven neither is their respect of persons with him so Paul is going to conclude this little section about how Christians are to treat one another within the economy of the saved. He talked about wives. He talked about husbands, children, fathers. Remember last week, slaves, and now he's addressing masters. Now this term master here is just what we would think. In the Bible days, of course, there were masters and there were slaves. And the term master would mean more than simply a boss man. Y'all have heard that term boss man. Uh, it's way more than a boss man. A master is literally someone who owns absolute rights to that person. Another term for master is Lord, is Lord. So Paul is addressing a real situation within churches at the time of the Bible between slaves and masters. How are you supposed to treat one another? And here he tells the masters, uh, give unto your servants that which is just and equal. And then in Ephesians, Paul says, non-threatening. Now, the, the issue is this, for, for all these that we're talking about, is how we treat each other being Christians. <laughs> you see, folks, we're not like everybody else on this planet. And I said it every week. We have a set of beliefs. We have a guidebook. We have a uh, uh, we have a, a book to follow to where we treat each other different than everybody else treats each other. Why? Because at the end of the day, we've got a higher one than us that we've got to give an account. That's what Paul says. Knowing that you masters, you have a master in heaven. I think sometimes that, that we forget that, that uh, all will give an account. Now, we're saved by the blood of the Lord. We have been cleansed. Our sin is cast as far as the east of the west. But we will stand before God. And we will disclose the works we've done here being Christians. Don't you want to be able to stand before the Lord as clean as possible and give forth good works that won't burn up, as Paul says, like hay and stubble, but, but good things that will last. 
the expectation of what Paul's talking about is that these masters that had slaves at the time knows that they have a master in heaven who they will give an account for. Now, it's hard, I understand, for us to uh, to to uh, to get a grasp on this because we don't have slaves and masters, at least not here. We don't participate in slavery. We don't have slaves. We're not slaves to the master. Now, it might seem in our government today that we're slaves to the government, but in fact, we're not really slaves. We're able to do uh, to some degree what we want. So how do we look at all these scriptures Paul's talking about? Well, the bottom line, if we live as Christ, Christ would have us to live treating each other in love, in fairness, and in hope. And, and, and thus, this would fulfill the greatest commandment, which is what? Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, and strength. And the second is to love your neighbor as yourself. And you see, that's what Paul is trying to get these believers here to get to. Whether you're a wife, this is how you act. If you're a husband, this is how you act. If you're a child, this is how you act. If you're parents, this is how you act. If you're a slave, if you're a master, this is how you act. And it all encompasses the phrase, we are under Christ who is all in all. You see, we've all got Christ as our master. And let me comment on that. Some people uh, don't fully understand of Christ being your Lord. I'm going to tell you, Christ is our Lord. When we look at him, of, of course he's our Savior. He has saved us, but he is the master. He is the master. So if we put these things that Paul's talking about in place, it'll revolutionize how we live. Now, moving on, he goes on. He doesn't just stop there. He moves right in to prayer. And I call this, just following the scripture here, the battle of prayer. Look at 4.2, Colossians. He says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all also praying for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I'm also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Now, I call this two battles that Paul's talking about. Paul's talking about a battle of prayer, and Paul's talking about a battle of watching. Now, when, when, we, when we think about a battle of prayer, this is why I say it's a battle. Notice the first word. In your King James, it says, continue. In other translations, it says, uh, be devoted, be devoted. So to continue to be devoted is to do something with intense effort, with the implication to overcome difficulties. How many of you have sat down and decided to pray and had difficulty praying? Anybody? Anybody uh, try to pray at night and fall asleep? Well, this is good for Miss Bell because usually I don't fall asleep to after the third hour. And I'm saying that tongue in cheek. Usually what I do when I pray, I pray based on the seats. I know that's goofy, but I can't help it. That's just the way it is. I start in the back and I go all the way to the front. So I guess in this case, the back would be better if you want to preach or pray because then I'll pray for you before I fall asleep. And I'm just kidding about that. But uh, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's awful, isn't it? But, but pray is a battle and it's difficult sometimes to overcome the challenges to pray and that's why Paul says be continue be devoted to prayer and to me it jumped off the page this is almost like battle uh, battle language be devoted to prayer that doesn't just simply mean pray once a week that doesn't just simply mean pray when you come to church. To be devoted to something is, is to, 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 to be willing to pour into it and to overcome difficulties because you can see the good outcomes of what you're praying for. Or you can see the worthwhileness of praying. And it's interesting, this same terminology is used in Acts 1.14 
where it's, it's talking about of the apostles, it says they all continued in, and that term continued there is it, they all were devoted with one accord in prayer and supplication. Uh, and, and with the women and, uh, and the men and mother of Jesus and with his brethren. They were all continuing in prayer. We today are to be in prayer. And we today are to be devoted to prayer. Now, you may ask, well, what kind of prayer is this? Is this a prayer to where we assemble on the street, we walk down the street and pray? No, I think it's much more than that. I want to read to you a little bit out of Matthew chapter 6. And it's interesting, our Lord Jesus, he didn't just kick us off the back of the pickup truck and say, y'all just fend for yourself, people. Look here in Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. What we know as the Lord's Prayer is actually a, uh, a way for us to pray. It's actually a, a, uh, what, what we're supposed to do, what we're supposed to say, so to speak. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. And it's talking about alms given in different sorts. And when we come down to verse 5, look what it says. And when, and this is, is this read in y'all's Bibles, by the way? It's read in my Bible. You know what that means? It means the Lord said it. All of it's important. But the red letters, the Lord said it. I get, I technically, the Lord said everything but anyway. And when thou prayest, thou shalt, shalt not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue. And in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say to you, they have their reward. So how are we to pray as Paul is talking about? As he says, be devoted to prayer. Are we to go up in front of the church and have these big flowy prayers? And we're using, especially if you've been raised like most of us in a King James environment. And we flow with the those and the these and the their yonders. And we keep on going and flowing and flowing and flowing. And I used to ask the deacons when I was a young fella, I said, why do you pray in King James? That's what it is, essentially. And the reason is, that's what you've been reading your Bible all your life, which is okay. But we're not to flow with these fine linguistic prayers to draw attention to ourselves. Our Lord says, don't do that. Why? Because that's like the Pharisees. And what they would do, and to keep in mind now, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the high priest. Everything they did was for attention. They were not looking for the best for godliness. Their robes drew attention. Their actions drew attention. They wanted people, and as a matter of fact, when you'd go put alms at the temple, uh, <clears throat> they would uh, blow a trumpet when someone would take their uh, to, to go in Jerusalem and pay for their sin, so to speak. They would, they would take their lamb or they would have to change their money. They would blow a trumpet when, when money was put in. And, and they did that for attention. The Lord says, don't be like that. That's not the devoted prayer Paul's talking about. The Lord says, uh, when you pray, don't do that. Verse 6 says, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thine closet. Enter into thine closet. Now, the Lord's not saying you have to go into a closet. What the Lord's saying, you go into your place. You go into your private place. I don't want to tell you and declare to you that the battle is done in the private place. The devoted prayer of God's people is in the private place. And then he says, and when you shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And the Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. We're not to have these big flashy prayers where we impress people with our $10 words. If we impress people with our $10 words, I have immediately got my reward. And that reward is for impressing someone with my $10 words. It's not a reward from the Father. He tells us, if you're going to be devoted to prayer, our Lord says, go in your closet, shut the door. And this is, this is interesting here. He's, he's teaching this to his apostles. And when you pray, use not vain repetitions as a heathen. There ain't no need in us chanting 14 over and over and over and over and over. That's, that's the, 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 the picture here. The Pharisees, the pagans, the heathen, they would say these chants over and over and over. 
and over. And part of the reason they were doing that so they could accumulate people watching what they were doing. Uh, don't pray as the heathen, for they think that shall be heard for their much speaking. Can you imagine what the Lord's saying? They blab it. And I get to picture, have y'all ever seen Charlie Brown? What's the little character? Wah, 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 wah. What's that one? I can Linus is, is one of them. And, and when they talk, all you hear, wah, 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 wah. And I get the impression this is what the Lord's hearing when these people are saying all this blah, blah, blah. Wah, 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 wah. Lord's saying, there they go again. Wah, 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 wah. They line us in again. Don't do that. Don't, don't be speaking repetitiously. Then he says, and they, be not ye, uh, therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Isn't that something? You know, God knows what we need. God knows the occult is on the rise in Chilliam. God knows the family member of yours that's ailing. God knows the material things that you need. God knows the, the, the aching in your body that you have. He knows these things. Look what it says. After this manner, verse 9. And, and to me, and I've heard a preacher say this is not a model, but when my Lord says, pray in this way, and after this manner, to me it's a model. Is it to you? Am I reading this right? Pray in this manner. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So to be voted, in, and this is not all a sermon about the Lord's Prayer, but I'm just showing you what the model is. To be devoted in prayer is to first recognize the Father. And that the Father is greater than anything there is. And that there is nothing outside the Father that is any better, uh, better or bigger. Our Father, which is in heaven, hallowed. Holy, grand, great, awesome is your name. Thy kingdom, that is, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done uh, in earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm wrecking, and, and you don't have to say these exact words, but the heart condition is what matters. Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm needy. I recognize that you are the great God. And apart from you, I can do nothing. And Lord, your will is what is going to happen. Your will is what's going to fix things. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And I've told you this before. That's not to say, it's so fine what the Lord Jesus is saying. He's saying literally, Lord, give me the bread to let me make it just this far. You see, one thing that we don't worry about too much in our country is we don't have to rely on the Lord too much. Most of us is high on the hog anyway. But if we were in a foreign country and we didn't have no groceries in the pantry and we couldn't get no bread for the mayonnaise and we had to rely on the Lord, then we would be relying on him for every little thing that we have. You understand? Some of you have been there. We all have had stuff all our life. Some of us have been poor. Some of us, we know what it is to have to rely on the Lord to, for him to, to give us something. That's, that's a cinema here. Jesus is not saying, don't, don't. He's trying to get us to think about the gratefulness of looking towards the Lord for our very provision and not focusing on ourselves. You see, when a man, and I'm using that generic, when a man comes to believe that he is the one providing solely for himself, and it's not the great God above, that he may be working with his two hands, but it's God who's given him strength. It's God who's given him the wherewithal to work with his two hands, to make uh, a living for his family. That, that is God doing that, and we look to God and say, thank you, Lord. That's what our Lord's saying here. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We forgive. Not based on what the world says, but based on our forgiveness that has been given from God. And, and I love how our Lord at the, at the end in verse 13 uh, or 14 says, uh, uh, or excuse me, uh, 12, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. Again, at the end of the prayer here, it's turned back on the greatness of the Father. It's all the Father. Now, this is what's always amazed me about Jesus talking about this prayer. Is that even though Jesus was God in flesh, even though Jesus at any time could have had angels come to his help, Jesus thought it so important to pray to his Father in heaven. More than once, more than twice, many times. And I want to tell you, when Paul tells us to be devoted to prayer, we need to be devoted to prayer with the right attitude. Lord, I can't do it without you. I'm going to tell you, folks, if, 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 if you have not figured this out, that our country is so messed up, our society is so trashed, our government officials are so ungodly that if God does not step in, we're done for. And if we don't rely on him, because you see, this is where we got to get the attitude right. Me included at the head of the train. I've got to say, Lord, let your will be done, and I'm good with it no matter what. That's, it's easy to do when you got everything. It's harder to do when it's going right. So for each of you and me, that, that's different. We, we work on different parts of this prayer. But, 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 but we need to be devoted to prayer. And then Paul goes on, he says, uh, continue in prayer. And he said, and watch in the same with thanksgiving. It's very interesting. Not only is Paul saying be devoted to prayer, he's saying watch or literally to stay awake be vigilant be watchful not only do we are we watching uh, what the Lord's doing for us through our prayers as we pray for people we're also watching what is going on so it informs us on our prayers you know, one thing the Lord, and I, I've got scriptures, and I'm not going to mention all of them. I've got dozens of scriptures that we could go through where our Lord Jesus says, what? Watch and pray. Watch and pray. I want to tell you something, folks. We must be staying awake today. We must be watching what's going on. And our response to that is praying. Ephesians 6, 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. That's interesting, isn't it? So we're not only watching what's going on around us, we're not only seeing what's happening, we're watching other people's lives. And we're watching to see how we can pray. Miss Deborah's having this bad time at school with her children. This is how I pray. Uh, this family, Miss Laporta's, is sick. This is how I pray. The, the government's crashing. This is how I pray. You see, it, in, it, it educates your prayer. But listen, you can't watch if you're so wrapped up in yourself you can't see anything else. I'm guilty. Guilty. We must... Pay attention. That's why I thank the Lord for Andy Mims putting this out here on the thing about the uh, uh, thing, the event. I did not know it was there. So I'm now watching. And now we pray. 
And see, we watch and pray not with a not with the expectation that God's not going to do nothing. We believe He's going to do. We believe that He's going to act, and whatever He chooses to do, we're going to give thanks. First Peter four seven says, "But the end of all things is at hand." Now we know it wasn't in the world because we're here now. What's Peter meaning? But the end of all things at hand. Yet be therefore sober. Watch under prayer. You see the end times that the Bible speaks of. Have been started since Christ ascended. And we are all the way in the end times. This is the times. That we must watch and pray. Our Lord told his apostles. Watch and pray. That you enter into not, not enter into temptation. And this is for us. The spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. You know, it's discouraging when you look around and see so much stuff going on. It's discouraging when, and, and we may be tempted to, to not want to continue to watch and pray. We want to we be tempted to throw in the towel and say, ah, no need to pay attention to what's going on. We want to be tempted to isolate ourselves into a church and only have a nucleus inside of ourselves and never go out. I'm going to tell you something. When you read the book of Daniel, uh, when, when, um, when Babylon was overtaken, uh, and, and I think it's, and I'm not prophesying, I'm not a prophet, but what's happening in our country is this. <clears throat> when Babylon was overtaken, they got liquored up. That's an old country term for they were getting drunk. They got liquored up. They were partying. And you remember what happened? If you read the history, the, uh, the Medes came in and they dammed up the river that flowed into Babylon. And when they dammed up that river, they were able to come up under the walls and to take it over. I'm going to tell you something. If we don't have our hand on swivels as Christians, it's going to come right in on us, right under the walls, if we don't pay attention. That's why we watch, and we watch based on our Bibles, and we pray based on what we see. And then when it's so bad, when we don't know what to pray, the Spirit intercedes according to the Scriptures and prays on our behalf. Because there again, God knows what we need. Let's not get struck that, that, uh, of, not, uh, of not being taken by storm. There's, there's evilness among us. There's things going on. The, the country's in despair. The only hope is Christ. The only hope is Christ. We must watch and pray. And you see, in conclusion, what Paul would have, it, it all goes back to how we're going to treat each other. As we watch and pray for one you know, people say, well, preacher, he had not called me to preach, and I don't have no ministry. I, you know, what, my body's broke. I can't do nothing. Let me tell you something. As long as you have got a, a, a thought in your mind. And as long as you can put thoughts together. You're able to pray for someone. You're never so bad off that God won't use you. I realize a lot of people can't go out and maybe their body's broken. And, and you know, you go to. Uh, you go visit nursing homes sometimes. You see people in condition. And, and it's so, it, 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 you know, society and the world, they put them in these places and it, because they threw with them. Don't ever think God's through with you until he's through with you. Because as long as you're here, he's got something for you to do. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Father, we thank you for these words you've given us. Lord, we praise you for your goodness. And Lord, as we 
Think about our country and think about our county. Lord, we we realize, Lord, without you, we can do nothing. There, there is nothing we can do, Lord, without you. Father, we, as you lead us and guide us, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet as Brother Bill comes. Maybe you'd like to pray for someone. I want to invite you to come. 249.